Hello, Perception Painters people. All right, so in this video, I'm going to be talking about how to become your own safe place. Now, this is not a video where you're going to learn how to become your own safe place because learning to become your own safe place is a process. It is a journey. It is not a thing you do and then, oh, that's how I do it and now I, I know how to be my own safe place. And it's not even a thing you do. There are several different tools to put in your toolbox to help yourself become a safe place for yourself. And depending on how traumatized you were, right? So depending on how much the world has told you that who you are and what you are, it, you are not allowed to be that. You have to be something else. And the degree to which you were actually unsafe and are actually unsafe in your reality. To being yourself, being in this life, the way society is set up, the way your family was set up, the way your culture or your religion or whatever it is that you grew up in, the degree to which you are actually unsafe, so that is another thing. We have to acknowledge that feeling unsafe and feeling like we're not able to be on our own side and feeling like we don't have a safe place with ourselves is not your fault. Mm -hmm. And the fact that you have faced things in your reality that were not safe and were traumatizing and that were you not getting your needs met and you not being allowed to be yourself and, or physically, like literally not being safe in your environment, like the law enforcement not being safe, the education institutions you went to not being safe, being around your friends, being around your family, being physically not safe, mentally not safe, emotionally unsafe, spiritually unsafe. That is real. And that happened. So you have trauma for a reason. So the degree to which you do not feel safe with yourself is the degree to which obviously the world was unsafe for you. Either telling you it wasn't okay to be who you are, like everything seemed fine, and you had your physical needs met and no one was actually threatening you, but you feel very deeply unsafe, or the physical, like there really actually was things in your environment that were making it unsafe for you. This is real. There's nothing wrong with you that you don't feel safe. And it's the degree to which you were taught to be unsafe and that you were unsafe that you feel unsafe. So it's real. It's not just something in your head. Don't let the spirituality world gaslight you that you're just making it up or that you should just be able to be a safe place for yourself. This world really isn't safe for any of us and it's extremely unsafe for a lot of us. So that's that. It's not your fault. So now I'm going to just talk about my personal experience with becoming my own safe place because I was the kind, I have Asperger's and I have been physically ill my whole life and my caregivers didn't know that and my religion, it just I grew up having the physical unsafety of being sick all the time and caregivers who didn't know how to help me, who eventually didn't want to help me and um, started to blame me and shame me and blame me for my physical stuff and my the way that I am mentally, emotionally and spiritually was very unsafe. I don't fit into society, I don't fit into school, I didn't fit into my religion, I didn't fit in with social groups, I didn't fit in anywhere. So I was just like constantly outcasted, constantly rejected, constantly not okay and did not have a secure attachment. And I don't have the proper neurotransmitters and the proper hormones to come into rest and digest. So I just have cortisol all the time. And so I know what it's like to feel like you're very, very, very not okay. And that it, you're dying all the time. Like that's how I felt. I literally felt like I was dying. So, and, and to not have any kind of secure attachment in my external reality. So with that, I'm just saying that I can understand and I can empathize what it feels like to not know how to be your own safe place and to even try and it feels like nothing. And so that's what I really want to start with. It's if these practices that I'm going to talk about don't feel like anything to you in the beginning, that's normal. And it doesn't mean you're doing it wrong and it doesn't mean that there's something else. It means this is going to be a process and a practice and it's going to take time. You're going to try these tools over and over and over again and it's not going to work. And you're going to think there must be something that I'm missing. And it's like what you're missing is having had a secure attachment. What you're missing is having had someone demonstrate to you what this is like because that's how this is supposed to happen. We're supposed to have a secure attachment in our childhoods that teach us how to, what a safe place is like and how to learn and how to make mistakes and how to be sick and how to have pain and all these things and learn from it and grow from it and 
and find our empowerment within it. That we can figure things out, that we can find answers, that we can fail and it's okay, that we can be our true selves and have that be okay, that we can have our, our needs met and like on all levels, that we can not be antagonized. That's how that's supposed to happen. But if that didn't happen for you, this is going to be a challenge. So just really understand that, okay? So the first thing that happened for me with becoming my own safe place was actually religion. I was raised in the Christian church and for some reason my mind kept filtering out the part where you're supposed to feel guilty and that God hates you and is punishing you all the time. I mean like I did get that and I had that and I felt like I was being tested all the time and everything that was hard was just supposed to like pray it away and all this stuff. But the other thing that I got was just that Jesus loved me. That there was this Jesus character who unconditionally loved who I was. And so having that internal relationship that I, whatever <laughs> it was, that there was just this belief in me that there was someone or something out there who didn't think that I was totally horrible was I think the beginning of me being able to develop my own safe place inside myself. So I didn't have an actual secure attachment in my physical reality. So I literally kind of like invented one out of God. And so I just want to put that out there. That like believing that there's some higher power or some higher force or some higher wisdom that just unconditionally loves and accepts you can be a really good place to start if you've got nothing. Okay, and if you don't believe in that and if that doesn't resonate with you, totally, that's fine. I'm just going to say this is one of the things that worked from my experience. If that doesn't work for your experience, I totally get it. If your experience of religion and God is just this punishing judging thing I get it but for me that was the first kind of connection to there might not be something wrong with me that I can I can like go to this Jesus figure and he will unconditionally love and accept me the second thing was basically when I was in the worst place ever with my body and my life, like I had, I had moved out a couple of years before. I, I was realizing that I, I just like was in pain all the time. My body was in pain. I hated Western life. I had really codependent relationships. Everything in my life was painful. And I was constantly like everyone else on the self-improvement path. That if I just fix myself, if I just fix my body, if I just fix my diet, if I just fix this, if I just fix this about myself, one day I'm going to fix myself and then I'm going to be good and then I'm going to be happy. I was living my life through shame and guilt. Everything about me was wrong. All of my pain was my fault. Everything in this world I was either helpless to or was my fault. And I was just feeling completely disempowered and that's how I felt. And I had this moment where I was like, okay, I might never get there. I might never heal my body. I might never figure out my career. I might never, because I've been doing this self-improvement stuff for years and I feel like I haven't gotten anywhere. So there was this moment where I realized I was going to have to just learn how to like who I was in the pain I was in, in the trauma I was in, in the not knowing the answers, in the not having any, any solutions. And I was just going to have to not hate myself. And letting go of I will love myself when, I will, be my, I will be on my own side when, and just saying, no, I'm going to choose to get on my own side right now, even if I never figure my life out, was everything. So I just would encourage you to look at your own situation and where you are saying, I cannot love or accept this part of myself because this part of me is bad, this part of me is wrong, this part of me is shameful. This part of me is objectively ha causing harm to me and others. My scapegoat, my self-sabotage, my physical illness, whatever, whatever it is that you think is wrong or bad with you. Can you say, what if I'm never going to get rid of this thing? And my one option is, my two options are to hate myself forever or to learn how to love and accept this part of myself. So like for me, I was sick, so sick, and I was, I was insane, like just my, my mind was insane. And I said, I'm, I'm not going to try and fix myself anymore. I'm going to assume my body is on my side. 
I'm going to assume that all my neuroses have a good reason for being there. Right? And this is, I think, the, the thing that makes it so that we can start to get on our own side. Is we start to assume innocence instead of guilt. Because all of us right now, when we don't feel like we're a safe place for ourselves, it's because we are assuming guilt. We are assuming we should be ashamed of ourselves. We are assuming we are bad. We are assuming we are inherently flawed in some way with all of our pain. Or we're assuming we're inherently hopeless. Like there's absolutely nothing we can do and I'm going to be in this pain forever and I'm abandoned and I'm lost. But the first step, like I say, is to recognize all those places where you're just like, this is not okay about me and I'm assuming this is a bad thing about me and I'm just doing this because I, I know better but I'm not doing better and I need to get this under control or I just really want to get away from this pain. I really don't want to feel this way forever. I can't accept that I might feel this way forever and so I have to hate this part of myself or be constantly trying to fix it or improve it or whatever. But like just that moment of letting go of trying to fix myself and saying, how can I learn to accept and love me even if I'm in pain forever? even if I never figure this out, was huge. And that is a hard moment to come to, okay? Because you have to grieve the heaven you think you're going to get when you're healed. And so this is a hard moment. I, I don't think this is easy. But I'm just going to say, for me, that's what it was. I had to let go of the hope that I was ever going to become this person that didn't have the pain, that was healed, that was better, that was fixed. I just said, how am I going to get on my own side right now? Which led me to, how am I going to start to meet my needs for where I'm at right now? Okay, so either if you're in the abandonment, I can't figure it out. All these problems, I've never been able to solve it. No one's ever been able to solve it. I'm completely alone. And if someone can't help me, I'm, I'm totally not, like lost. Or I'm trying to fix all these parts about myself because I just feel like if I could just fix all these things that are wrong with me, my life would be better. When we finally say, okay, I'm not going to go to either of those places. Even if I never figure it out, I'm going to learn how to be my own safe place. I'm going to stop blaming myself. I'm going to stop shaming myself. I'm going to stop panicking some, or abandoning myself when I'm in pain and assuming it's hopeless and assuming there's no answer and assuming I'm just going to be like this forever. And it's, like I say, hopeless because I've never seen change. I've never seen growth. I've never seen anyone fix or solve a problem. I've never felt like I've fixed or solved a problem. It just seems like everything always gets worse. Acknowledge all of that. And then just come into, okay, what do I need right now? So I'm not going to fix myself. So if I were just going to accept myself like I'm a lovely, innocent, perfect little child, like I would accept a child, Right? We, ha we have a much easier time not projecting broken and stupid and ignorant and flawed and all these horrible things, shameful, guilty, onto a small child. We take that perspective and we put it on ourselves. If I was just a small child acting this way, I would assume that child isn't getting their needs met. I'm in pain because I'm not getting my needs met. And maybe I don't know what they are, and I can't figure that out right now, and that's okay. But when we come from a place of, I'm not doing anything that I'm doing because I'm wrong, bad, shameful, horrible. I'm doing everything I'm doing for a reason because this is how I'm getting my needs met right now. And, and this is how I'm coping with a life that I've been told I have to be that doesn't align with me. Or this is how I'm coping with being so deeply unsafe out there. Then we can start to be like, oh, okay, right? I'm not guilty. I'm not terrible. I'm not shameful. I'm not lost. I'm just doing the best I can with what I know. And if I can get on my own side, and when I self-sabotage, when I cope, when I scapegoat, when I numb, when I hurt myself, when I hurt others, instead of what's wrong with me that I did this, or oh my God, I'm never going to heal, we think, what do I need right now? What do I need right now? What need do I have right now that's not being met? What do I want that I think I can't have? What do I not want that I feel like I can't get away from? And we just start to acknowledge our own wants and needs. And that's going to be really hard and scary. Because a lot of the time when we acknowledge what we really want and what we really need, we're admitting to ourselves that I, we want and need things that we don't know how to get. And that's okay. Right? And we just start to be our own safe place 
where we can admit to ourselves, I hate this, I don't want this, I don't like this, I'm feeling this way, I'm doing this thing, and we stop judging and shaming ourselves, and we get curious instead of judgmental. That's the beginning. And then this is going to be a long journey. It took me a long, long time for my impulse when I'm in pain to be, what do I need and how can I be here for myself? And when I can't do anything about it, how can I just comfort myself and just be with myself? Not tell myself we're never gonna figure it out and this is hopeless and all that stuff. Like hear that voice, validate that voice, but developing over time the witness to that voice and saying, it's okay though. I'm going to be here with you and I'm going to love you even if. I'm going to be here with you and I'm going to love you even if. Even if we die. I'm going to be here with you and I'm going to love you even if. Even if the worst thing happens, I'm here with you. It's not your fault. It is a practice over and over and over again to develop that witness state where you can start to actually witness all the places where you're abandoning, shaming, and guilting yourself because that's a big part of this, where you're not even gonna know how much your self-improvement and your hopelessness and all these things come from. You're just assuming you'll never be able to figure it out or you're assuming that you're horrible and you need to fix yourself. And processing all of that, okay? Like the reason you abandon yourself, the reason you don't feel like a safe place for yourself is a big complicated thing. It's not just a little tool you missed and now you can just get that tool and have it. It's learning to be an adult in this world that taught you that you're not allowed to be who you are, where systems are unsafe, and you, were never learned, you never learned to problem solve. And where you were taught over and over again that being your real self gets you a, a rejected and abandoned by everyone and you need other people, so if you get rejected and abandoned, you're gonna die. So you can never be on your own side. That's why this work is so not simple. So start from my, <laughs> like the beginning of my YouTube channel. Because technically speaking, every video I've ever made is a tool for how to be on your own side. How to become your own safe place. There isn't a thing. There are gonna be times when what you need to be your own safe place is just to listen to yourself cry. And there are gonna be times where it's just practicing developing that witness. Like being able to witness your emotions and not react. Witness your pain and not react. Questioning what I'm making this mean. Do I have to abandon myself? Is it going to equal this horrible consequence that I think? Or can I just come into the present moment? Um, do I need to hear that I'm going to help you figure it out? Do you need to pray to something to just help me? What do I need right now to feel safe with me? What would I have needed from a caregiver? And can I imagine giving that to myself? If some perfect, secure attachment were here with me right now, what would I want from them? And can I give that to myself? Or can I ask for that from someone? Can I get a therapist? Can I ask my partner? Can I ask my sister? All of these things are a part of this. So go and watch all my videos, especially coming, starting from coming out of the shame, shame closet. Um, this is like all the work I'm doing in my mystery school watch my Instagram lives, look at, go through the RSL part one through seven on my Instagram highlights. There's so many tools for how to get on your own side and it's just a practice and it's a thing you do over time and it's a skill you build, okay? So that's sort of my journey for how I got into this and then how it unraveled the whole can of worms that it is. And just know that it's going to be a daily practice. It's not going to feel like much in the beginning. It may not feel like anything in the beginning and you're not doing it wrong. It's just developing that adult witness is really difficult. Coming out of our child perspective where we're completely abandoned and alone and don't have the answers and need someone to help us, we need to like validate that part and start to develop that witness that can validate that part. It's a lot. So take it slow. There is no, this is how you do it because a lot of us don't have that part that feels like the adult. So we just have to develop it. So those are my tips. Be gentle on yourself. Curious, compassion. Okay? And I'll see you in the next video.